The UK government's doing it again. They're trying to fight knife crime by banning some random objects. Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator and also Easton Antique Arms. For anyone who doesn't know me because you've been forwarded the link to this video, I'm an antique sword dealer. I've been head of arms of a London auction house. Um, I also teach people how to fence, uh, martial arts. I do stuff with film, TV, and I consult for museums, and I do product development as well. So my entire life is affected by the laws that uh, pertain to swords and knives. And since 2008, we've been having a pretty difficult time due to the banning of curved swords. Subsequently, the Home Office realized that they'd accidentally banned things like fencing reenactment martial arts and they quickly had to rush out a bunch of um, exemptions and defenses to enable these hundreds of thousands of people to continue with their completely peaceful and law-abiding activities. But with ever-increasing knife crime statistics in the UK, rather than looking at the causes uh, and trying to deal with the underlying issues, yet again the Home Office has pulled out their favourite trick of wanting to ban something. This time they're turning their attentions to machetes and large knives. So this affects a far larger number of people in the country trades, crafts, hobbies of all sorts, not just us sword users. Now what I'm going to do here is present my response which I've sent to the Home Office. I'm going to share a link to that below as well and also a link to the consultation. So this is currently a consultation process. What you can do to make a difference here is to respond to the consultation. Obviously I suggest that you do so in an intelligent, coherent, well edited and concise way maybe more concise than me, um, so that it will have the most effect and help the officials at the Home Office to realise the pitfalls of what they're suggesting. And what are they suggesting? Well, fundamentally, they're looking at the use of large knives in crime, despite the fact that we know that the vast majority practically all, in fact, of knives used in crime, statistically are kitchen knives or tools like screwdrivers and chisels. But nevertheless, they're looking at machetes and large knives, and they have to read the consult um, consultation document below, but fundamentally they're looking at banning or prohibiting knives which contain m two or more of the three characteristics. One, a single edge, two, a serrated edge, and three, more than one hole in the blade. As many of you <laughs> will immediately realise, this covers a whole raft of objects which aren't necessarily the things that they're intending to ban. But now I'm just going to read through my response. You can uh, absorb that and hopefully it will help you to form your own response. Dear Sir or Madam, I'm writing specifically in response to the government consultation looking at the proposal to add a new object to the Offensive Weapons Act 2019. I want to focus on three specific points that I feel have been drastically overlooked. Number one, the proposal could cause more deaths from stabbing. Number two, the proposed text erroneously covers many objects that are common tools. Three, the proposal must include exemptions and defences for legal activities. I'm a military historian and fencing instructor consulting for TV and films as well as being an antique military dealer. I go on to basically give my resume, I won't share that with you here. While I fully understand the impetus and desire for new anti-knife crime activities given the troubling statistics, I was alarmed to read the 2023 proposed legislation updates to the Offensive Weapons Act 2019. I feel this proposed proposal sorry, is very wide of the mark and will do more harm than good. It does not at all seem to achieve the goals of the government, in brackets, to reduce knife crime and make us safer. In fact, it could increase the number of deaths, as I will expand on below. In addition to that, I can see a lot of pitfalls evident in the text, which will adversely affect civil servants enacting and forcing it, for example police and border force, as well as trades and hobbies trying to comply with it, such as reenactment, bushcraft, fishing, TV, film and theatre, gardeners, DIY, etc. Your draft proposal appears impractical and counterproductive. Number one, the proposed legislation will make the streets more dangerous. As I'm sure you're aware, the Office for National Statistics the ONS, estimates that over 80% of knife violence is committed with kitchen knives, with a large proportion of the remaining 20% being carried out with tools such as box cutters, chisels and screwdrivers. There are, they are predominantly used to stab, not chop. 
Kitchen knives and garage tools are omnipresent and easily obtainable. There are no official statistics in the UK, but it is thought by those working in the field that I have spoken to, police, doctors, lawyers, uh, civil servants, that violent crime with machetes makes less than 2% of the total of uh, knife crime. Um, violent crime with swords seems to be well below 1% and in fact is so rare as to be not measured or quantifiable in any of the available um, official statistics. Curbing the av availability of other forms of knife will have no effect on the availability of kitchen knives, chisels and screwdrivers, of course. Kitchen knives and screwdrivers are cheap and omnipresent, so these statistics are not at all surprising. Kitchen knives and screwdrivers seem to be the default weapons of knife crime in the UK at the moment, based on the data available to us, with things like machete wounds being very rare, statistically. If a machete is not available to an attacker, a kitchen knife always will be. A machete, or indeed most of the prohibited zombie knives, is usually less dangerous than a kitchen knife. Stab wounds are far more dangerous on average than cuts are, and statistically more likely to result in death. Kitchen knives are usually far sharper on both the edge and the point than a typical machete or zombie knife. Zombie knives are often virtually blunt to the touch compared to a kitchen knife and relatively useless as weapons of offence, being often intended as display items primarily. Most standard garden machetes are relatively blunt, compared to kitchen knives at least, and broad tipped, being used to hack and designed to hack, not stab. They will not generally penetrate clothing with a stab due to their tip shape. Machetes are therefore, in general, less dangerous medically than kitchen knives or chisels or screwdrivers are, and those other things that are predominantly used in stabbing. If the criminal intended to use a machete were to switch to a kitchen knife, then your legislation has only succeeded in making the attacker more dangerous, and we should expect deaths to increase correspondingly. Surely enough criminals um, encouraging criminals to switch to using more dangerous kitchen knives is a recipe for disaster. Criminals choose machetes for intimidation due to their size, not due to their medical knowledge or understanding of how weapons work. Doctors will tell you that kitchen knives are often more dangerous to life than a machete is, and criminals will always have access to kitchen knives. Therefore, the only logical evidence-led approach is to concentrate all efforts on the causes of knife assaults, including robust stop and search powers, which police apparently want. Not to try and ban ever greater numbers of tools when kitchen knives will always be available in every kitchen to every potential attacker. Number two. The proposed legislation will accidentally ban many common tools. The wording of the proposed legislation is such that it will create confusion amongst those enforcing it and those living their everyday peaceful lives by covering a, an array of objects which are not intended to be banned. The standard machete is a garden tool, like a billhook or a sickle. A standard machete does not have a serrated edge, nor does it have any holes in the blade, usually. Your proposed text, therefore, will not cover a normal garden machete. However, the proposed wording will ban certain types of other tool that are practically never used in violent crime, as far as we can see from the available statistics, and are usually less dangerous anyway than a standard kitchen knife. Any text that you devise to cover a normal garden machete would also cover such tools as bill hooks, sickles, carving knives, spoke shaves, lawn mower blades, kebab knives, or meat cleavers. As is probably clear to you, these tools are used by numerous trades and hobbies the length and breadth of the UK and are essential to those trades and hobbies. Why can inconvenience hundreds of thousands, possibly millions, of citizens when most of the knife crime is being conducted with kitchen knives? Has always been, and will always be, regardless of what you ban. The criteria you pro propose of banning knives over a certain size, with blades having any two of one, a conventional edge, a serrated edge, and more than one hole in the blade, accidentally runs the risk of covering a wide range of non-offensive and practically never used in crime tools. 
The ambiguities even extend to the most fundamental question of what qualifies as an edge of a blade. For example, if a kitchen knife has not yet had the grip scales added to it, then what you have is a blade with more than one hole in it. So that would be a prohibited illegal item. This would become banned, therefore. And how would a company manufacturing kitchen knives ever get to construct them uh, before they've put the grips on. Many gardening tools have serrated saw edges and holes in the blade. Many DIY saws have a serrated edge and holes in the blade. Chainsaws have serrated edges and holes in the blade. Many types of scissors and kitchen knives have holes in their blade and certain types of sport fencing and historical reenactment swords also have holes in their blades. The list goes on and on. Three. Exemptions and defences. We have already hopefully learned a lot of lessons from the disastrous banning of curved swords, and needless I should add, in 2008, and the subsequent amendments um, by the Home Office to deal with the wording of the legislation to allow the numerous popular legal activities enjoyed by hundreds of thousands of UK citizens to continue although not unimpeded, I, I have to say, such as fencing, reenactment, theatre productions, filmmaking and experimental archaeology. If we learn anything from this episode of legislation, it is that we should not allow history to repeat itself. For a lot of cost, stress and time, there has been absolutely no demonstrable benefit to reducing knife crime. In fact, knife crime has increased. And in fact, stabbings have continued to rise according to all available data. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of lawful businesses and people have been adversely affected and the police and border force have had an increased workload as a result. In fact, off the record, I can tell you they were months behind uh, because of the workload created by this some years ago because I had to deal with it in the process of my business. Nevertheless, lessons were learned from the dreadful wording of the 2008 Act. I therefore plead with you that if this legislation does go ahead, these lessons be carried forward, specifically meaning, one, any new item added to the offensive weapons list includes at least the same exemptions and defences as are already in force for curved swords. Namely that, a, antiques be completely exempt from this law, as they are currently, and b, there be defences in place, legal defences, for modern items that are either traditionally handcrafted, or made by hand, or are being used for filming, theatrical performance, historical reenactment, sports, martial arts, and all of the defences that are currently in, um, in place. So we come to my conclusion. If this legislation went through with its current wording as it stands now um, on the website, then it would be a logistical nightmare for all involved, including the police and border force who have to enforce it, not to mention the hundreds of thousands of people, possibly millions of people, it will penalise for carrying or using an otherwise lawful cu cultural or healthy activity or their job. Huge numbers of objects would fall under these definitions and be subject to regulation, which I don't think the Home Office civil servants have realised. But thank you for your attention in this matter. And once again, I offer my experience in this field free of charge. If you want consultation, I'm happy to give it because this affects vast numbers of people. Um, and I'm happy to assist with this um, because it affects so many people in the UK, basically. As a fencer, an events organiser and an antique dealer, I have to contend with the 2008 law updates on a literally daily basis. And it is excruciating. And it's also excruciating for the officials who have to deal with it as well for no demonstrable benefit. I do, of course, so support robust measures to try and reduce knife crime in the UK, which is a complicated, complex issue with a lot of underlying causes. Banning a serrated machete, I don't think is going to reduce anything at all. Uh, but to achieve that, I think that the um, eye needs to remain focused on the correct ball and not be distracted by legislation that will have no demonstrable benefit, but may have hugely detrimental effects to businesses, hobbies, culture and our heritage. Yours sincerely, Matt Easton. So thank you very much for watching this. Um, what you can do now is um, compose your own letter. Feel free to use any parts of mine that you like. Um, I'll post a link to it below. Um, 
you've got to contact them by the beginning of June. These consultation periods are short at the Home Office, deliberately so because they don't want these things to drag on and they want to just get on with it and do it and rush things through. In fact, we only heard about this red legislation kind of by chance, uh, but I don't think they realise how huge this could be. If this goes through with its current wording, it will be a disaster. It will be a huge, colossal mess um, for the police, for civil servants, for Border Force, HMRC, for all of us are doing things like reenactment or you know making films or theatre productions, um, all of the things I've mentioned, and it's going to affect normal people doing things like fishing or gardening or DIY as well. Absolutely diabolical. So please send some form of civil response to the email address and the links down below. Thank you for watching. I am Matt Easton and hopefully I'll continue to be. See you all soon back on the channel. Cheers folks.